Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Crusader Kings II The Byzantine Empire, the substantially larger and now dominant Orthodox power of the Western world Byzantine Empire. We came, we saw, we conquered. And good on us, right? Good on us. However, it did happen a lot more quickly than I would have expected. And I don't mean this in terms of LP time. This is already my longest running LP. And uh, it was it was definitely dragging out there. But just in general, I, I didn't think that it had the epic feel that I wanted as really we only went through four generations. There was Marcus, then there was Tip, then there was James, and then there was Basilissa Doctor Clinical. And that's where we're currently at. So with that in mind, I will be continuing this series in a series of epilogues, episodes that I will be posting not really at any regular rate, but every once in a while. I will play the game on my own time, and roughly every 10 years of in-game time, I'll upload a little update. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, again, because I feel like it would add another dimension to this, give it more of an epic feel once we've gone down another four or five generations and we have this humongous family. But also because I really appreciate all of those of you who participated and many people who suggested names to be used for family members were not able to be in the LP up to this point. And I feel really disappointed about that. I thought it wouldn't be a problem at all because there's so many family members, but apparently it was. So if your name hasn't come up yet, stick around. Maybe in a month or so, uh, when I post a few of epilogue episodes, you will be in it. So that is my plan for this LP. As a day-to-day as -day LP, we have achieved our goal of mending the schism. We have conquered the four great cities of the early Byzantine Empire, and we've added Rome, the historic home of the Roman Empire, onto that as well. We've achieved what we set out to achieve, however, I still kind of want to, for my own enjoyment, play this series out on my own time with occasional updates to you. So I hope that you enjoyed watching it up to this point, and I hope that you will also enjoy the epilogue episodes. Next, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching, thank you for participating, especially those of you who were named in the LP. I really want to say thanks because that's what really made the game enjoyable to me. I mean, it's a fun game. I enjoy playing it. But at the end of the day, these are just randomly generated little people who you don't care very much about. And when I was able to put names to them, your names, I did care about them because they were real people or at least representations of real people. So it all of a sudden became interesting for me to follow their lives and see what they were doing because instead of just random ones and zeros and, and things that people are doing in the background, little little computerized people, it represented those of you. And so I that really got me involved in the game and it made it a lot of fun for me. Some examples of situations that, that really I got a kick out of and that made the series for me were, for example, when Desdemona, Countess Desdemona, conquered some lands and created her own duchy. That was very surprising and potentially dangerous to the security of the Empire, but it was still pretty awesome to watch. Also, the many family beatdowns that took place where one of my relatives would declare war on someone or other and all the cousins and brothers and sisters and everybody would get together and gang up on them. I was sad that as the Emperor I wasn't able to participate in that, but Still, it was a lot of fun to watch. Another great moment was Nyasha and Lady Person Man, two sisters, daughters of Miyuki, who was the first daughter of Marcus. They were apparently the best generals in my empire, and so both of them led armies during that period. And it was great that we made the changes to the game that we did in order to allow women to inherit and allow women to own land and allow women to be on the council. Because otherwise, I mean, in the base game, we would have never even seen of those two. They would have just been married to somebody and that would have been the end of it. But in the way that we played the game, they were real figures and they 
led armies and conquered lands on behalf of the Empire. So that was really awesome. I mean, two sisters, both amazing generals, both leading armies at about the same time. And then, of course, who can forget Tolstoy's bastard house of Constantinople, who is still going strong to this day, currently ruling over two counties in southern Italy. That was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun creating that bastard dynasty and the, and the different coat of arms that they had. And then, of course, Ronan Canem over in Aleppo, who was our marshal. Probably, well, he wasn't the only family member on the council. I know Miyuki for a while was spy master, and there may have been others, but he was definitely a... For a while there, when he was marshal, he was doing a lot of things. He was in, joining in plots. He was finding out heretics. It was, it was a pretty entertaining few episodes, and so that was another experience that I thought was, was quite awesome. So what's in store? Well, I've already mentioned that I will be continuing the series off and on as, you know, short little recap episodes chronicling each 10 years of time. I'll just do that until I either get tired of it or we run out of names, one or the other. Again, to create a little bit of an epic feel to this, let's see what happens a few generations down the line. So I'm not going to subject you to hundreds of hours of moving from one end of the empire to the other, conquering one county from the Abbasids, then one county from Italy, and back and forth and back and forth. But I will give you kind of the historical roundup so that you can follow the conquests and intrigues of the Aurelian dynasty. Also, it'll give me an opportunity to give a little bit more history because... I tried to really add some history to these LPs, but I was stymied by the fact that the time in this LP moved very slowly. We moved really, really fast in this LP, but over a very relatively short period of time, so there wasn't much history to really talk about. So hopefully with these little 10-year updates, they'll give me a lot more real historic time to go over. That would make that, I believe, interesting as well. Thank you very much for watching. It has truly been a pleasure. This is my first long series that wasn't Dominions 4. It was a little different. It was kind of a, a risk on my part to branch out into something unusual, but I really, really enjoyed it, and it was an absolute ton of fun. This game, frankly, is designed for LPs in the sense that you can name the family members, and it gives a really fun feel to the gameplay and I hope to find more games in the future that also allow me to incorporate the community in such a way because I think that really adds an element to the game that improves its quality both for me as a player and for those watching at home. So by all means leave comments to let me know overall how you felt about the series. Any constructive criticisms you may have, any things you think I did particularly well, and again, I just appreciate everything. I appreciate your watching, those of you who have been through since the beginning. Thank you once again very much. Have a good one.